Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Harsha Ali Khan. Last two videos I have completed the problems on linear programming (LPP) on graphical method. In this video, problem number three, third problem, I'm going to explain in detail in examination. Very frequently they will ask the problem to solve the following problem graphically. It's very easy to find out the solution of LPP using graphical method. So if you want the complete knowledge, watch all the videos from beginning till end. Then only you can be able to get the complete grasp. Otherwise, if you simply join in between, then you may not be able to get the complete command. So before starting the next problem, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. So take a screenshot of the points, then I'll explain every point in detail. Now, <clears throat> see the problem number three. Upon completing the construction of his house, Mr. Natarajan discovers that 700 square feet of plywood and plywood scrap and 800 square feet of white pine scrap are in, un are in usable form for the construction of tables and bookcases. Mr. Natarajan, he has constructed a house and after completing the house, some scrap is left. That is plywood scrap and white pine scrap. Plywood scrap is available 700 square feet, whereas white pine scrap is available 800 square feet. This is the maximum availability of resources. And uh, he wants to make two products, that is tables and uh, bookcases. Now, it takes 16 square feet of plywood and 8 square feet of white pine to make a table. And 12 square feet of plywood and 16 square feet of white pine are required to construct a bookcase. For each of the decision variable, how much resources are required that is given in the problem. By selling the finished product to a local furniture store, Mr. Natarajan can realize a profit of 25 rupees on each table and 20 rupees on each bookcase. Profits are given per table and per bookcase. When the profits are given, our objective is to maximize the profit. How many uh, how may he most profitably use the leftover wood? Use graphical method to solve this problem. So it is specifically asking you to apply the graphical method to solve the problem, right? First of all, we have to formulate the problem. So before formulating, it is better to make the table. See the table here? Resources. Two resources, we have plywood and white pine. And two decision variables, we are going to make tables and bookcases. And total availability. So plywood, the total plywood available is 700 square feet and total white pine available is 800 square feet. So we can make use this 700 or less than 700 but we don't have more than 700. Similarly 800 square feet is white pine, not more than 800. So profit per table is 25 rupees and profit per bookcase is 20 rupees. For making one table, how much plywood and how much white pine is required that is given in the problem. For one table, 16 square feet of plywood and 8 square feet of white pine that is given. Similarly, for making one bookcase, 12 square feet of plywood and 16 square feet of white pine is required. That's it. Now, easily we can formulate. Before formulating, we denote x1 is equal to number of tables we are going to produce in order to maximize the profit. Similarly, x2 is the number of bookcases we have to make to get the maximum profit. So x1 and x2 are the number of tables and number of bookcases to be produced and sold. Now formulation of LPP. Objective. Our objective is to maximize the profit. So what is the profit per table? 25 rupees per table. How many tables we are going to make? X1 tables. So 25 into X1. 25 X1 is the total profit by selling X1 tables. And what is the profit per bookcase? 20 rupees. How many bookcases we are making? X2. So 20 into X2. 20 X2 is the total profit from bookcases. The so maximum profit will be 25 X1 plus 20 X2. Subject to constraints. 
Now one constraint is plywood. So 16 square feet is required to make one table. How many tables? X1 table. So 16x1 plus 12x2 bookcases. How many bookcases we are making? X2. So 12x2. So 16x1 plus 12x2 less than or equal to 700. Here. 16x1 plus 12x2 less than or equal to 1600. Right? Similarly, white pine. How much white pine is required per table? 8 square feet. For making one bookcase, 16 square feet. So 8x1 plus 16x2 less than or equal to 800. And non-negativity restriction, x1 and x2 will be 0 or more than 0. But it will never be less than 0. Less than 0 means minus, negative. We cannot produce negative goods. We can produce 0 or positive. So non-negativity restriction x1 and x2 should be greater than or equal to 0. That's it. This is the formulation. Now we have to solve the problem by graphical method. Solving the problem by graphical method. First of all, we have to convert the inequalities into equations. Two inequalities are there. We have to convert this inequality into equations and find out the coordinates of x1 and x2. First inequality. 16x1 plus 12x2 less than equal to 700. This is the inequality. Now make it equation is equal to 16x1 plus 12x2 is equal to 700. This is inequality and this is equation. Suppose let x1 is equal to 0. If we take x1 is equal to 0, 0 into 16 will become 0. So 12x2 is equal to 700. x2 is equal to 700 by 12, 58.33. What is this 58.33? x2. How much is x1? 0. So 0, 58.33. That is the coordinate when x1 is equal to 0. Now when x2 is equal to 0, if you substitute x2 is equal to 0, 0 into 12 will be 0. So 16x1 is equal to 700. x1 is equal to 700 by 16, 43.75. So x1 is 43.75 and x2 is equal to 0. We got the coordinates of first inequality. Now second inequality. 8x1 plus 16x2 less than or equal to 800. Is equal to 800. Let x1 is equal to 0. When x1 is 0, the so 16x2 is equal to 800. x2 is equal to 800 by 16, 50. The coordinates 0, 50. x1 is 0, x2 is 50. When x2 is equal to 0, then 8x1 is equal to 800 x1 is equal to 800 by 800. So x1 is 800, x2 is 0. We got the coordinates of both the inequalities. Now scale. What is the scale we should take on x-axis, on y-axis, on the graph? On x-axis we are taking x1, number of tables. And y-axis we are taking x2, number of bookcases. Here, what is the highest value of x1? 0, 43.75, 0, 100. The maximum value of x1 is 100. We cannot take 1 centimeter, 1 unit. Then we need 100 centimeters. It is not possible to draw the graph for 100 centimeter. So, we divide. 100 divided by 10. You will get 10. So, 1 centimeter will take 10 units. So, 10 centimeter, 100 units we can adjust. So scale on x-axis 1 cm 10 units. For x2, what is the highest value? 58.33, 0, 50, 0. The highest value is 58.33. Again we take 1 cm is equal to 10 units. So that in 6, 6 cm we can be able to take 60 units. So it is below 60. 58.33 is below 60. So we can adjust. This is the scale. Now draw the graph. Now carefully you see, on x-axis I have taken x1, on y-axis we will take x2. x1, 1 cm, 10 units. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, like that up to 100. Here also, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. That's it. Now we have to plot the coordinates. See here. The coordinates are, when x1 is 0, x2 is 58.33. This is x1, 0, x2 is 58.33. So 
तो 58.33 इज हियर बिलो 60 बिलो 60 पुट ए मार्क 58.33 देन सेकंड वन x1 इज 43.75 x2 इज 0 सो दिस x2 इज 0 x1 इज 43.75 दिस इज 43.75 राइट तो पुट ए मार्क एट 43.75 नाउ वी हैव टू मार्क्स हियर 58.33 here 43.75 join these two points with the help of a scale straight line this is the first inequality this is the first inequality now tell me whether it is less than less than equal to or greater than equal to less than equal to less than equal to means our solution lies towards the origin origin is here so that's why arrow mark right left arrow like this arrow you should make if it is greater than the arrow would have been like this right but it is less than so arrow mark should be downward that means our solution space lies towards the origin not away from the origin first line completed second line when x1 is 0 x2 is 50 so x1 is 0 x2 is 50 so at 50 put a mark here 50 then last one when x1 is 100 x2 is 0 this is x2 0 and this is x1 100 at 100 put a mark now join these two points 50 and 100 join these two points with the help of a scale straight line and it is less than equal to type less than equal to means towards the origin the down arrow this one is down arrow this one also down arrow that means this line says our solution lies downward not above so our solution does not lie above this line this is not the solution this is not the solution this is the common feasible region right because this line says the solution lies towards the left towards origin and this line says towards origin that means this is not our feasible region this is not our feasible region our feasible region is this one now we denote the corner points O, P, Q, R. The corner points touching the feasible region are O, P, Q, R. The shaded region in the above graph is the uh, feasible region or solution space. The solution, the corner points touching the feasible region is O, P, Q, R. The solution, the coordinates of these corner points are. Now we need the coordinates of this corner point. The first corner point is O. O means origin. At origin, x1 is equal to 0, x2 is equal to 0, always. So here O, 0, 0. Then P. For P, there is no need to calculate by seeing, by observation, we can find out the coordinates x1 and x2. Here x2 is 50. This is x2. x2 is 50 and x1 is 0. So 0, 50. So you can see here P, 0, 50. Then Q. Q we don't have. We have to find out the Q coordinate by solving the two equations. These two equations intersecting. Both the lines are intersecting at Q. So by solving the two lines, we can get the coordinates of Q. Now R. By observation, we can find out the value of R. Coordinates of R. Here X1 value is 43.75. And X2 value is 0. So x1 43.75 comma 0 these are the coordinates of r so out of four corner points three corner points directly by observation we got it one corner point that is q we don't have so the coordinates of q can be ascertained by solving the two equations the two equations are 16 x1 plus 12 x2 is equal to 700 and second 8 x1 plus 16 x2 is equal to 800 these two equations are intersecting here so we have to solve and find out x1 and x2 now see here the coefficient of x1 is 16 here coefficient of x1 is 8 so how to convert 8 into 16 multiply by 2 8 into 2 16 so multiplying equation 2 by 2 second equation i am multiplying completely by 2 so how it will become first equation as it is 16 x1 plus 12 x2 is equal to 700 second equation 2 into 8 is 16x1. Here 16x1. 2 into 16 is 32. 
32x2 is equal to 2 into 800, 1600 is equal to 1600. Now this uh, change the sign, plus will become minus, plus will become minus, plus will become minus. So plus 16x1 minus 16x1 will get cancelled. Now what it will remain? Plus 12x2 minus 32x2, you will get minus 20x2 on calculator. Calculate it. Plus 12 minus 32, you will get minus 20x2. Similarly, 700 minus 1600, you will get minus 900. The minus sign is there on LHS and RHS. Cancel minus sign. So it will become 20x2 is equal to 900. x2 is equal to 900 by 20 is 45. So we got the value 45 x2. Now substitute the value of x2 in any one of the equation. Two equations we have. So I am substituting in the first equation. Substituting the value of x2 in equation 1. 16x1 plus 12x2 is equal to 700. 16x1 plus 12 into x2 is how much here? 45. So 12 into 45 is 540. Now take this 540 to RHS. So plus will become minus. So 16x1 is equal to 700 minus 540, 160. So x1 is equal to 160 by 16, 10. So we got the coordinates of Q. That is x1 is equal to 10 and x2 is equal to 45. 10 comma 45. We got the coordinates of all the four common points. Now evaluation of objective function. Now we have to find out the value of z at each corner point. Whichever corner point gives maximum value of z that is our solution. Now corner point O, P, Q, R. For each of the corner point we have found out the coordinates. These are the coordinates O, 0, 0, P, 0, 50, Q, 10, 45, R, 43.750. So we have taken. Now objective function is written in the formulation. 25x1 plus 20x2. So I am writing 25x1 plus 20x2. Last column Z. Now we substitute the value of x1 and x2 in the objective function. So x1 is 0, x2 is 0. So 25 into 0 plus 20 into 0. You will get 0. Z value 0. Secondly, x1 is 0, x2 is 50. So 25 into 0 plus 20 into 50. So 25 into 0 is 0. 20 into 50 is 1000, z value 1000. Third, q, x1 is 10, x2 is 45. So 25 into 10 plus 20 into 45, you will get 1150. Last one, r, 43.75 is the x1 value and x2 value is 0. So 25 into 43.75 plus 20 into 0, it will become 875. Now check which is the highest z value. 1150 is the highest z value at the corner point Q where x1 is 10 and x2 is 45. We got the solution. Finally, we write the highest value of z is 1150 at the corner point Q where x1 is 10 and x2 is 45. What is x1? Number of tables. What is x2? Number of bookcases. So finally, we suggest to Natarajan make 10 tables and 25 uh, sorry 45 make 10 tables and 45 book cases if we make this combination from the i mean from the usable resources we can get the maximum profit of 1150 that's all this is the solution so this is the end of problem number 3 so you have seen after completing three problems i hope that you understood how to solve the problem by graphical method. It's very easy compared to simplex method. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video, share my channel, give your comment, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed and buy the super thanks which is given below my video. Inshallah, we will continue the next problem in the next video.